Hi and welcome back. So a new study has looked into the measurable effects of poor mental health and what effect they have on certain age-related diseases. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Columbia University's Mailman School of Public Health that looked into a study that was published online in Nature Communications which investigated how poor mental health can increase the severity of some age-related diseases. And there are links in the description below to the study and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. So this study released by the Columbia Mailman School of Public Health and the Peking University School of Public Health provides some of the first large-scale evidence that some processes of biological aging may contribute to the risk of depression and to anxiety. Until now, nearly all work to date has focused on poor mental health as a risk factor for accelerating aging. A complementary but less studied hypothesis is that the reverse process may also occur and accelerated processes of biological aging themselves pose risks to depression and anxiety disorders in older adults. So the researchers tested associations of blood chemistry measures of biological aging with prevalent and incident depression and anxiety among half a million midlife and older adults. The study used was the UK Biobank, an ongoing study with 502,536 participants, and they were recruited between 2006 and 2010, with an age range of between 37 and 73, and the study included multiple follow-ups. The findings showed that adults with more advanced biological age were more likely to experience depression and anxiety at baseline. These adults were also at higher risk of depression and or anxiety over the eight-year follow-up period. This was when compared to their peers who were the same chronological age, but who when tested they were found to be biologically younger. At the 8.7 year follow-up point, participants with an older biological age were at a 6% increased risk of incident depression and or anxiety. Zhu Gao, PhD, first author of the study and an assistant professor in the Department of Occupational and Environmental Health Sciences at the School of Public Health in Peking University said, among older adults who were free of depression and or anxiety at baseline, those whose blood indicated that they were biologically older than their chronological age were predicted as more likely to develop depression or anxiety over the follow-up compared to those whose blood indicated that they were biologically younger. Depression and anxiety are common mental disorders that can very often co-occur and are associated with increased disability and mortality, especially in older adults. It therefore follows that prevention of depression and or anxiety in older adults has the potential to mitigate the burden of age-related diseases in an ever-growing ageing population. Professor Gao stated, this study helps confirm that identifying risk factors and mechanisms of vulnerability to mental disorders must be a public health priority. This particular research team has released two earlier papers regarding the connections of air pollution with biological aging. The first was in the journal Aging Cell in 2022, and the second was published in the journal Environmental Health Perspectives in 2023. Referencing these previous studies, Professor Gao explained that these findings complete the logical circle, demonstrating that air pollution may also trigger depression and or anxiety by accelerating biological aging. The researchers analyzed the UK Biobank data for three overlapping groups of participants with whom Gao and the corresponding senior author, Daniel Betsky, PhD, an associate professor of epidemiology at 
the Columbia Mailman School of Public Health, followed up to provide information on their lifestyle and health and to provide biological samples. Let's now take a look at the groups. The first group of 424,299 participants included all the individuals who provided baseline blood chemistry data required for the calculation of biological age measurements and who completed mental health surveys at the enrollment baseline. The second group of 369,745 participants, a subset of the first group, did not have prevalent depression and or anxiety at baseline. The third group was a subset of individuals. They did not have prevalent depression and or anxiety at baseline. And they also participated in the online follow-up mental health survey. This subset of 124,976 participants helped inform the prospective associations between baseline biological aging and the syndromes of depression. Let's look at the results. People with incident depression or anxiety experienced a higher incidence of chronic conditions over the follow-up period. This was when compared to those that did not have depression or anxiety. They were for diabetes, 6% versus 3%. For cardiovascular disease, it was 12% versus 6%. And for cancers, it was 11% versus 8%. The research team noted that while these findings help establish a prospective link connecting older biological age with depression and or anxiety, they do not address the mechanisms mediating this link which could be formed at multiple stages in the progression of the aging process. Professor Belsky stated, we all age at the same rate in chronological terms, but from a biological perspective, some of us age faster than others, developing chronic diseases and disability much earlier and living shorter, sicker lives. Now we have measurement tools that can quantify differences between chronological and biological age. In this study, we used two of these measurement tools to study the connection between aging and mental health. Findings suggest future directions for depression or anxiety risk assessment in older adults, as well as the potential for therapies that target the biology of aging to contribute to the prevention of later life, depression and or anxiety. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I normally use a piece of paper to go through my review. I can't get the printer to work yet, um, so I've got my tab. Also, I'm still trying to work out the lighting and the sound effects. Some people say there's still an echo. Let me know if there is an echo and it's annoying. Uh, I'm still trying to work out where to place certain things to try and cut down on that echo. I'm also looking into purchasing the acoustic tiles to stick on the wall in certain places to try and cut on any echo, cut down on an echo if there is one. Um, so I'm not going to make light of depression or anxiety. For those that have it, it's a very serious condition. And if you think you have it or you know someone who you think may be um, showing signs of depression or anxiety, then they need to seek the advice of a medical professional as soon as possible. Going back to the stats that we mentioned earlier, those who started with either depression or anxiety then showed a higher incidence of chronic conditions. And remember the scores were for diabetes, it was 6% as a versus 3. For cardiovascular disease, it was 12% six percent and for cancers it was 11 or eight percent now not massive numbers but i'm sure if you could choose one of those numbers for yourself you would always go for the lowest number well that's it for today i hope you enjoyed the video i look forward to seeing your comments in the comment section below as always please take care stay safe and i will see you in the next video bye for now